<clears throat> Man, maybe this is, is an indictment against uh, modern day Christianity. Uh, the first thing proposed in the gospel to people is, if you believe in Christ, it will change your life. No, it won't. That is not the promise. That is not the promise. The gospel does not promise to change the quality of your life. It is to change the quality of you. Be transformed in your thinking. Uh, don't be like the world in that way. But that's not to throw out changes in your life. I'm just saying that it is not the first promise or even the real promise of the gospel. The gospel does not promise to change the quality of your life. It promises to change the quality of you. Well, where does that go? Well, how would that work? What does it look like then? If, if that's what it promises, what is the qualities that will be changed? Galatians 5.22 talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Do, do you know what those are? They're, they're simply this. They are, fruits means the consequences of. That's the nature of which one will take on. If we are in connection, in a living relationship with God, then these qualities are transferred as we're faithfully connected to us. That is the promise. And in Galatians 5.22, it says this, the fruit of the Spirit is this, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, no law against these things. And then 25 pulls it together simply by saying, if we live in the Spirit, that is this connection we're talking about. It doesn't have to be super mystical, but it has to be real. That's where it all is. In this connection, if we live by the Spirit, then let us walk in the Spirit. In other words, if we have something going on the inside, let it show on the outside. But now let's pull back to the quality of life. If this is the quality of you that happens, just think, if, if your basic instinct is to love, as God defines love, that is, and if a basic part of your nature has become peace, and it has become joy. Have you ever known anybody who's just a peaceful person? Don't you just like want to be around them all the time? They just calm you down? Just think, if these things are part of you, all this love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, what will be the effect on your life? What will be the effect on your life? Rippling out. And what will be the effect of whether you were some, some uh, impoverished Christian in Afghanistan trying to live among the Muslims, or whether you're a, a, a high executive in the United States? The life may be different, but the qualities will have the same effect through the life. The quality of the life will change. How can you not have love as a main part of your life and have it not change what happens around you? These things will change the quality of your life as a consequence. But it doesn't start with the changing of your situation. It starts with the changing of you. The changing of you goes on. The beauty of God's transformation is that the quality of life doesn't define you. You define the quality of life. That's what Christianity promises us. And that's what it's shown in proof. Think of the life of Jesus Christ. He's born into a single mom home, basically. A plot to murder him before he ever gets out of diapers. Uh, all this stuff. And even when he does grow up, he, he's nothing special. He's a tradesman. He's just another blue-collar worker there in, in Israel. And yet this guy performed miracles of compassion that we still read about today. In fact, what he does with his life saves humanity. How did that happen? Because his life was so special or because he was so special? Well, that's Jesus. Well, let's move on then. Let's think about Peter. Loud mouth. Walked around with his foot in his mouth half the time. Fisherman, uneducated, no special training in, in any ways. Just a real rough and ready guy. And yet this man turns out to be the, the original director of the church. We sit here today, and we, we worship here and here today, a large part because of what Peter did. We read about Peter's life all the time. Saul, 
yet to become Paul. Oh, a religious professional, all right, but one of the most brutal men that must have been around at the time. Grabbing people, throwing them into prison, killing them whenever he could. And then, but yet here we are, as we read through Scripture, 90% of the New Testament <laughs> turns out to be his writing. The majority of it, anyway, turns out to be his writing. Why? Because of his situation or because of the person he was transformed into? The quality of the person defines the life. And the quality can be set by the gospel. That's the good news of the gospel. Eternal perspective is nothing more than living the Christ life. Eternal perspective is the Christ life. The Christ life is this world. It, it is not defined by your good fortune or your bad fortune. It is defined by how we approach both or either. It is defined by the perspective by which we face both. And if we face it from an eternal perspective, from a Christ perspective, even the worst situation has a touch of the divine in it. There is always a bit of heaven, even in the worst situation, if we have an eternal perspective. To live the Christ life isn't to ignore life in the moment. It's to see its true value in the bigger picture. That's what it does for us. To live for nothing beyond the moment. Do you know anyone who just lives for nothing but the moment? What it tends to do is make you extremely self-centered and extremely small and extremely aimless. If there's nothing beyond the moment, if this is it, it's just whatever gets me through this very second of the day, if that's it, life is small and it is aimless. Eternal perspective makes this life worth far more than anything else.